This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Today's episode of the Doc and Jock Wrestling Podcast is brought to you by The Athletic. Premium coverage for passionate Detroit sports fans. Listeners of this podcast can save 30% off the first year of an annual subscription by going and visiting theathletic.com slash DSP. Become a member of a growing Detroit sports community. They got great writers, great in-depth features, and their content is really supreme. They just did a feature on Justin Verlander returning to Comerica Park. Don't miss out. Become a subscriber and save some money. Go visit theathletic.com slash DSP. Oh my God! Welcome into the Doc and Jock Wrestling Podcast. This is episode 47. This is a big one. Hell in the Cell. We had their go-home shows on Raw and SmackDown. You know we'll get into it. We do have some news and notes. Uh, Sounds like one Mr. Y2J is garnering some heat in the wrestling community. We're going to discuss that a little bit. Of course, we do have our Hell in the Cell predictions. And when I say we, I mean the guy who's doing it with me. He is the one. He is the only he is John the Doc Macaroon. What's up, cuz? Adam, I can't wait to preview this week. Watching wrestling was interesting, uh, you know, especially with the backdrop of the Lions playing on Monday Night Football, but I want to play this intro song because every time I hear it, I really like it. It's a great intro, and it's one of my favorites right now on the current WWE roster. Every time I hear it, I get hyped. Drew McIntyre, new entrance song has been awesome. When I hear it, I'm like, okay, bad things are going to happen. A bad man is about to enter. It was an interesting Raw to start off, but uh, the week that, you know, if you would ask me how did WWE prepare the fans for Hell in a Cell, I'd give it a C. I'm, like, not really thrilled for it. I mean, the go-home shows were decent, not great. A lot of confusing storylines that are emerging, but Raw was okay, but... Not one where you go, okay, if you missed it, you missed out on a whole heck of a lot. Some of the matches didn't make sense, and it just really failed to hit home for me in terms of, hey, watch Hell in a Cell this Sunday. Yeah, I thought it was a real lackluster Raw. Um, I thought SmackDown was a little bit better. Uh, let, let's just jump right in with Raw. We opened the show with what was just a mess. We we still have the the feuding fractions between uh, Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and, uh, and, and Drew McIntyre. Taking on the shield, basically the shield annihilates everybody, the, the, like the entire heel side uh, of Raw. So I don't know what that says about your heels, it's just not very good. Our, our first real solid match was the B team losing their, their rematch to Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. Now I thought this was a solid match, I thought this helps move the storyline forward. Not so much for the B team, I think the B team is going to slide into the background now. But for Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler, you had Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose come out. You had them attack. And this sets up for what's going to take place at Hell in the Cell. So I thought this did a really good job kind of catapulting that forward towards the weekend. What do you think the future should be for the B team? Do you think they get another title run? Or you say now you just have some fun feuds with some of the other tag teams? You know, I'm not sure. Because I thought the, their last two matches uh, against McIntyre and Ziggler were both very good. And the B team's over. I mean, yeah. they have now. They're saying, and the music is the intro is good. I, I like the B team. It's just right now the big thing that we're seeing across the board is what do you do with these mid carders? Because you have the B team, and they could be main eventers. They could be guys that you could feature and do some fun vignettes with. You could put the spotlight on them. But it seems like right now, when a team like that kind of hits the spotlight, they take it away real fast, and then they kind of get lost in the shuffle in, in the mid card. At, at some point, I think guys that come in as comedy tag teams there's got to be something to make them a little bit more serious i think if they can find that serious stroke and still be funny and still be a comedy act i I think it'll work but for right now it seems like with mcintyre and ziggler and then you've got ambrose and and rollins we're going back more to serious tag teams we're doing away with some of the comedy and i think they might get lost in the shuffle because they're primarily a, a comedy 
team. Now, that being said, like I said before, their matches have really stepped up. They've gotten much, much better with, uh, with taking on McIntyre and Ziggler. I thought those were their two best matches that they've had uh, in the last, I don't know, two months, three months. I mean, they were very good matches. They were legitimate. They showed something in those matches. And we both know these are good wrestlers. These are guys who have had runs. You just need to let them show that spotlight a little bit more, and they have to shine. And I think if you were to put them in more of a serious role or be funny but with a serious side, I think they could really excel. It's just what is WWE going to do with them? Nobody really knows. Rousey and Natalia then beat up Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. Again, another good match. Again, setting up for Hell in the Cell. Rousey ends up getting some damage done to her ribs, and this kind of is going to tie into, I think, what's going to take place at Hell in the Cell. Did you like the way this set up? Yeah, I did. And looking at the match, obviously, I popped hard for the uh, heart attack. That was really cool to see, and it was really nostalgic uh, having um, N- Natalia hold up Alexa Bliss and then Ronda Rousey hitting the ropes and then, bam, delivering the move. It was really cool. Um, I'm excited for that matchup. It's pretty much, I think, you know, in getting ahead a little bit uh, in terms of predictions, I think that we know who's going to get over in this matchup. It's nice to see because there's an opportunity also down the line to predict a feud, maybe Natalia Rousey, and that could be interesting. That could make some money. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's where we're going to end up. Yeah. I don't know who turns heel in this, though. Right. Does Natty turn or does uh, does Ronda Rousey turn? But it, you're right. I think that is going to be the, the next feud that we're going to end up getting out of all of this. Real quickly, uh, before the next key matchup, disappointing in that you have Nikki Bella return and you ruined kind of Ruby Riot again, something that I just don't find to be appealing in that you got Ruby Riot. She's a little bit better. She's a worker. And you have Nikki Bella go over on Ruby Riot. Didn't like that. And I think it's time now to stop seeing the Authors of Pain defeat Scrubs. Yeah. Put them in a feud. Figure out what's next for them. Seeing them in, in squash matches now, week after week. Now, I know we've asked for it in the past, but these guys are different. They're a different breed. They can wreak havoc. Let them interrupt the shield. Let them interrupt something and kind of get in the mix there. Handle your business and stop being lazy with AOP. The, the one thing about what WWE does with their women, unless you're Alexa Bliss you're not getting over if you're a heel. Yeah. It's really frustrating. Because yeah. Ruby Riot's great. Ruby Riot is awesome. And to have a good face, you have to have a decent heel. You have to have that because exactly. it, what happens then when a heel wins, you have no reaction because people have been, you know, all these women, and even on the main card with the guys, they've been devalued. The heels have been devalued. You're exactly right. Kevin Owens comes back, uh, basically blames him quitting <laughs> on, uh, uh, on Bobby Lashley, uh, taking out Sami Zayn, and then... He was begged to come back by Baron Corbin. Really lazy booking, really lazy writing here. But we do get our violent Kevin Owens back. Hopefully more of the the prize fighter, maybe a little bit more aggressive in this incarnation of it. I like this. I think this is uh, very good for Kevin Owens and for the Raw roster because you do need that alpha heel. You you need that. But you're making up for really botching. Uh, a quitting angle because yes. you could have had that play. Great. They could have done much more with it in terms of you know piquing people's interest into when is he coming back? Maybe piquing an appearance on SmackDown. Um, maybe even going to NXT. Something to kind of rile people up. But to just have him come back real quick in a in a situation like he did, he made the moment of saying I quit way less valuable than it should be. Yeah, totally devalues it. That was something you could have kept him off TV until after Hell in the Cell, and the next thing you know, you have. It just faces getting attacked, like surprise attack, right? Like you cut back to the to what's going on backstage, and you've just got some face laid out, right? And then you just do this for a couple weeks, couple weeks. Next thing you know, you find out it's Kevin Owens, huge pop, crowd goes crazy. He calls out whoever he wants, whether it be Bobby Lashley or or whatever. You really screwed up your booking with with Kevin Owens here. Um, hopefully, you can correct that though. Uh, next big moment was Mick Foley coming out, interrupts Elias. And ends up coming out to announce that he's going to be a a, a special guest referee at Hell in the Cell for the Roman Reigns-Braun Strowman match. I thought this was really cool. It kind of tugged on some nostalgia from his Hell in the Cell with The Undertaker. Uh, Again, interrupting Elias. He then sets up a match with Finn Balor versus Elias. I, I thought all this played together really, really well. And you get a little bit of rub from Mick Foley to Elias. It's good to see them on uh, you know, the television screen together. And uh, very good job by Elias. And it was definitely big news for the show because what role will Mick Foley have in this matchup? What will he be part of? What will he do in this matchup? So it's kind of intriguing, interesting stuff. Do you think Mick Foley takes a bump at Hell in Ooh, a Cell? You almost know him. Maybe accidental? 
Or if uh, I could see Braun Strowman doing some things. Yeah, yeah, I could see Braun Strowman doing one of those power slams or maybe choke slamming him. Mm-hmm. It'll be a little bit interesting. Not, I'm not sure, but I'm assuming he's going to take a bump. Something that has to stop happening on Raw is really having meaningless matches. Mm-hmm. Finn Balor, Elias, what did that do for anything? I don't. Know. Why was that there? I don't. <laughs> I mean, what, what's what's going on with Finn right now? Because he was facing Baron Corbin for a couple weeks, right? And now all of a sudden he's taking on Elias. And then now Elias has lost so much in recent months that you know what is that value really given to Finn Balor for doing it? That's why it makes no sense to do it this way. In that you have not elevated Elias enough to make it a meaningful thing. It's like that's why we're rating it as a nothing, a nothing burger. Yes, it, 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 not <laughs> you beat good. Elias. Well, so good. So everybody else right, does too. Exactly. <laughs> Generally, chicks beat Elias. All right. So hey, cool, bro. All right, uh, let's let's move on to SmackDown. Now, I think SmackDown was a decent show overall. I thought it was pretty I thought it was pretty good. I think they did a really good job moving certain storylines along. Uh initially I think SmackDown kicked off a little bit slow for my liking. Hard, yeah, Hardy should not be kicking off a show with no, a promo. I, um Jeff Hardy, something's going on in terms of, you know, his ability to re- remember lines and deliver it with passion, and it seemed like the crowd was a little confused by it as well. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It seemed like it just kind of Fell flat. Yeah, it was flat. It wasn't it, delivered. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't well done. Um, I, I really liked the the Charlotte Sonya Deville match. I thought they had a really good match. The best part was Becky Lynch attacking Charlotte from the crowd. Becky is disguised. She has a wig on. She has glasses on. Uh, ends up attacking Charlotte and throwing her in the disarmor on the on the ramp after kicking her in the face twice. I thought this was awesome. This is what you need to to, to help build this match. Now you have to remember this is coming off of a last week where I really felt like they lost some steam. They did that side-by-side promo, and it just was just really, really flat when they were here in Detroit. Now you come back this week, and you have this angle. I think this was awesome. I thought this was a really good build for this match. My hope is Becky Lynch ends up winning the title at Hell in a Cell. No doubt about it. I think that um, people have started to comment and saying, okay, this is kind of reminiscent of how Steve Austin kind of kind of came up where he was this badass figure and he got a pop and things like that. And I think that's where they're going down this road with Becky Lynch, and it's well-deserved. She deserves a good angle, and it's it's about time. She kind of kicks ass and takes names and becomes that uh, last kicker that she's always said she's going to be, and she's going to have a run, and I think it will produce some good television, some good matches, and definitely um, will produce um, some quality TV, and, and it'll elevate her character, which is what's needed. Now, along the way, like we said, you don't have Jeff Hardy open end. Again, Shinsuke Nakamura handles business. I felt like it was a D plus. It just wasn't that interesting. But again, the AJ Styles situation with Samoa Joe has captivated everybody's attention. Everybody's messaging going, I don't really like Samoa Joe, but they love the fact that he's this badass figure that's really elevating this feud and he's holding his own with AJ Styles. And so that's the kind of been the consensus from people that support us on our Twitter page at Detroit Podcast is that they say, I'm not really a fan of Samoa Joe. I kind of like to hate him, but what he's doing in terms of the work to elevate this feud with the best wrestler on the roster has been supremely awesome. Yeah, I think he helped elevate himself into that next stratosphere. He yes. is a top star now in WWE. Top guy. All that being said, he's held his own. He's not yes. like he's not uh, withering away. He's not, you know, being, you know, not not taking the rub off of AJ Styles. Not being lazy. He's holding his own. It's creative. It's it's delivered well. It's he's professional. Those, he's a, he's a five tool player, right? Right. You, you you hear that referenced in baseball all the time. This is a guy who delivers a promo with such intensity, and when he wrestles, there's such intensity. It's palpable. You can almost reach out and grab it. He does a phenomenal job. Again, all that being said. I was not a fan of the dueling promos. Yeah. They had different promos that, that were basically went up against each other. I don't like this. I need a little bit of physicality. I want to see at least one of you. Um, Get over. Right. I yeah. d- didn't really see. It was just like, okay, cool. This was filmed earlier, and this was filmed earlier. Now we're going to butt these side by yeah. side, and that's what you get. I, I thought you could have did something a little bit more creative. But that being said, AJ Styles did a really nice job, and I could see AJ turning heel. That at Hell in a Cell. Rumor, yep. and, and Samoa Joe, uh, again, phenomenal. The dude is so intense. He's so he, he's over. He's awesome. Now, question for you. Rusev Day ends up going on to beat The Bar. With that win, they will now challenge The New Day at Hell in a Cell for the WWE SmackDown tag titles. Was this the right choice? Very solid question. It's it's hard to look at because I like Rusev Day and I like the bar. I'm definitely a fan of both. Um, All three teams here are are 
Absolutely amazing, awesome. amazing. I think it's a good time now to elevate Rusev. I think anytime you put him in a feature matchup for a chance for a title, it's fine. Um, but obviously, I, I wouldn't like it at the expense of the bar. I feel like they need to be elevated as well. But I think this kind of leads to what we kind of think is going to happen. I don't think the New Day, they don't need a belt. I mm-hmm. think Rusev can do some things. Um, and, and if you want to break up Rusev Day, you could then have the next few too as well. But I think... In this situation, it was the right choice to go to to go with Rusev Day. It just sucks because you you also want to see shine for the bar as well. Right. It, again, all three teams extremely, extremely deserving. Nice. It's solid SmackDown tag team action. Exactly. Carmella comes out with our truth again. <laughs> is is she a face now? Like what what's going on? So she comes out for the match against uh, Andrade Cianalmas and Zelina Vega. Um, the, the, the valets at this point, Carmelo is a valet is not wrestling. It's just almost versus our truth. I don't know. No, Carmelo's a heel. I, 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 are you sure? Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss for words here because I don't know what she is. Now, almost and, and, and Vega are, are both heels and our truth is a face and Carmelo's with truth. <laughs> what? I what, think is, a, is this lazy booking? Is this a way just to get her on TV to get a pop? Yeah. Uh, what is this? Yeah, no, Carmella's a heel. She's perfect for it, that diva kind of situation. Um, I just think right now it's interesting. You need something to do with our truth and uh, it's definitely fun and refreshing to see him a little bit u- utilized, and it's good. But I think, no, Carmella is a heel, and uh, we'll see how this progresses. What would you like to see with how this progresses? Does she cost him? Does she like become maybe somebody that latches onto guys and just destroys them, kind of like a career killer? Ooh. Career killer Carmella. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, no, I don't think I, I liked her by herself. I didn't. Yeah. I thought she was really good in that. I thought she had a ton of charisma. I thought her matches were getting better. I, I thought she was doing a really good job progressing. I I liked her by herself. I don't think she needs to be with anybody. But it, I wouldn't. It wouldn't bother me if she turned face. I just don't think she needs to be with anybody. I, okay. I don't. I don't understand what they're doing here. It just. I'm perplexed. Okay. Um. To close it, we we end up having this really disjointed match between uh, Brie Bella and uh, Maurice. Everybody it, kind of looked at it when they reviewed it. They it, kind of knew that Brie versus Maurice wasn't going to be no. thoughtful. It wasn't going to be executed well. So they kind of what they did is. They covered it up. Yeah. Where they had a bunch of run ins, st- false starts. They basically and gave you like 10 minutes tease. of crap. Yeah. Is what it, was, it was. It was one of those situations that a lot of fans don't like is where you tease a match and you just kind of have distractions. You have false starts. You have to have Daniel Bryan kind of restart the match and officially do it. But it was really a situation where I didn't like it because I, I would have liked to have seen that match had it been five years ago. Now, no, but I don't like you know, setting up an angle with a match. You know what I mean? Right. I obviously understand that these these tag teams are going to fight on the card, but, you know, you could have had it elevated in a better way by just maybe a couple moves, couple uh, put well put together ideas and then have it break down or not have a match at all. Just have like a beat down in the back and just end the show. Something, yeah. This it, was this disjointed. Was, yeah. It was not right. Not very good. All that being said, I'm going to give my vote for SmackDown. I thought SmackDown was a much better show. Hands down, better two hours. Now, I also want to introduce a, a new quick segment here because a lot of people, when they listen, they want to go back and review. And so what did you think was the match of the week on either card? Um, what was the match if you say you got uh, 10 minutes and you're free and you're trying to get uh, you know distracted at work and the boss is away and he's you know going to the potty and you get 10 minutes to kind of go to the network or go to Hulu and rewatch one match this week? What match would you tell people to watch? It's a good question. Can I give two? Yeah, two, uh-huh. two acceptable. Uh, I, but going uh, forward, we want to narrow down one. to so pinpoint a match where you go. Okay, I want to tell people that to watch one. this. Okay, Jock tells people to watch what if they got ten minutes. I would recommend watching the entire B team: Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, uh, especially with the run in from two thirds of the Shield at the very end. That would be number one. After that, probably the Rusev Day bar match. Okay. I, I thought that was another very good match. Okay, which one do you think was better if you were to rank uh, it? Probably the B team. B team. Drew okay. McIntyre, just no problem. Because the way it sets everything up. No problem. I'll tell people Jock's match of the week, and it'll come out every Friday. He'll tell you which match was the best match that he thought this week. And it doesn't have to be on WWE. If you see something of an indie thing that you want people to watch, Jock's match of the week, B team versus Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. It plays into it because those guys are, are top guys and Drew McIntyre's music, man. Oh, when that, when that awesome. music hits, and I like the way his entrance is where he climbs the rope and he puts his hands up like, here I am. It's it's a ma- about, he's a massive man. It's too. about to go down. Drew McIntyre, match of the week. Good stuff. All, All right. right. Let's move to, to predictions here. Um, as far as uh, the verdict goes, Raw is trailing 22.5 to SmackDown 29.5. By and large, SmackDown is the better show. It's week to week. It's just awesome. the way it is. It's much more coherent, much more concise. 
they do a much better job storytelling. All right, uh, let's start with uh, Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella versus The Miz and Maurice. We were just talking about this match. Yes. Who do you think takes the W here? This is tough because you had The Miz kind of getting over a little bit, but um, when you have Brie Bella return, do you have her lose with Daniel Bryan? Um, But at the same time, The Miz and Maurice have also lost a a previous feud to John Cena. So does that continue? So it's really tough. So I'm going to go, though, what I think, honestly, is Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella. I think they win it. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, That's what I've got. That's who I have winning this match as well. Uh, Look, Daniel Bryan and, and, and Brie Bella... They When they attacked Miz and Maurice a little bit ago, a couple weeks ago, I was like, all right, cool. I can see this happening. Like when, when Bree sat there and punched Daniel Bryan in the face or punched the Miz in the face, I was like, all right, this is the direction we're going to end up heading. Um, some news on Daniel Bryan. It, it appears he signed a new deal as well. So he's going to be here for a while. I can see this, this whole thing just kind of being the jump off point and this building towards something towards SummerSlam or uh, towards uh, to, to WrestleMania. So I'm going to go uh, Daniel Bryan, Brie Bella as well. Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton uh, taking each other on in a Hell in a Cell match. Who do you have winning this? Straightforward. I don't see Jeff Hardy getting over on this one. Um, I think if you want to kick off the new character, you would have Randy Orton just simply destroy Jeff Hardy. This might be one of those matches where it might be after the AJ Styles match where you have AJ Styles and Samoa Joe just kill the crowd and just, you know, everybody's loving it. The crowd is on fire and you kind of a buffer match and you just have Randy Orton destroy Jeff Hardy in the cage for six minutes and just, you know, annihilate Jeff Hardy and and elevate Randy Orton's status by a a hellacious matchup. Maybe Jeff Hardy's going to try some, obviously look for some, you know, uniquely dangerous spots, but Randy Orton victory in the Hell in a Cell. Jeff Hardy beat the living tar out of Randy Orton at the end of uh, at the end of his Nakamura match on SmackDown this week. Um, I think that sets up really nicely for Randy Orton to beat the living tar out of Jeff Hardy this week in, or this weekend in the Hell in the Cell match. So I'm going to go RKO as well. Uh, Raw tag team match: Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre. They're the champions. They will be defending against Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. This is like such a coin flip for me here. I have no idea who's going to win this match. I don't have a problem if Ziggler and McIntyre retain. Um, I do believe that Rollins and Ambrose have been really, really hot lately. So I'm going to go with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose here. Got to follow along with you. Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, the shield. You want to elevate them. Um, Drew McIntyre and... uh... Uh, Dolph Ziggler obviously doing some work, getting the titles, but I think it's going to be a quick turnaround. Might go back and forth for the next couple months. Give me Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. All right, SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Uh, New Day is defending their titles against Rusev Day. Similar to what we were just talking about here with with Rusev Day. I think they deserve a belt. I think they should win. I'm going to go with Rusev Day to to capture gold and uh, unseat the New Day. Oh, you think it's a short run, huh, this time around for Mm -hmm. the New Day? Right away, quick. Yep. All right. I'm going to go with a new day. I think Ooh. that, uh, you know, they're a tag team that you don't just give them a belt and then take it right off of them. So I think that Rusev right now um, is on the verge of exploding with Aiden English. I know that they've been working together as of late, but this might be the jumping point to have Rusev lose this match. He gets pissed at Aiden English, and bam, you now have a ferocious Rusev who's going to go through SmackDown. So give me the new day. That might be the one match that ends up separating us when this is all said and done. Because we've been basically in lockstep since we started. Uh, Raw Women's Championship. Ronda Rousey is defending against Alexa Bliss. I'm going Rousey. I don't see why they take the belt off her. Exactly. Keep it going, Ronda Rousey. All right. The match that I'm really interested in, the one that I really want to see out of all these matches, it's the SmackDown Women's Championship. Charlotte Charlotte Flair defends against Becky Lynch. I'm a huge Becky Lynch fan. I, I, she's so over right now. I love this incarnation of her. I want her to win this belt so damn bad. I'm going to pick her to win. And I and she's probably going to end up losing. <laughs> but yeah. I want her to win. Because if you look long term, I think short term, the right play is to put it on Becky Lynch. But long term, you look at it and you go, in order for her to really fulfill being a heel, she's got to cheat to win. So I think that she's going to forego the belt in regards to um, a victory. She's going to look to destroy Charlotte Flair, not looking to get the belt. So we're going to see a vicious attack where it's going to be a back-and-forth match. It's going to be so close. She's going to have a lot of chances to get the pin, and her frustration will boil over, and she'll take a chair, or she'll take something, and uh, maybe 
one of the bells from the from the back there, and she's going to annihilate Charlotte at the expense of winning. So I'm going to go with a bonus on this one. I want to call a DQ finish with Becky Lynch trying to destroy Charlotte, and uh, Charlotte will win, but uh, Becky Lynch will be uh, on the verge of getting like half the roster trying to get her off of Charlotte. Mm, interesting. Elevate because... her as a heel at, at, at the expense of getting her a belt. See, I like that. Can I change by now? <laughs> uh, Char- well, Char- Becky Lynch does threaten to break her arm. On SmackDown, she says she will break her arm. Yeah. So I'm interested. To, I wonder if she maybe does an attack before the match, and Charlotte is hobbled. That way, you don't take you don't take a lot of the heat off of Charlotte for losing to Becky. Ah, interesting. All right, I got you in there for a bonus for DQ. Uh, AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Oh. I am you going did. to go with a, a, a DQ finish. I think AJ Styles wins. I think he turns heel. So there's going to be my bonus. AJ Styles turns heel and retains. Samo- so Samoa Joe will win. Yes. But AJ Be Styles. DQ keeps the belt. Right. Will win. Um, AJ Styles turns heel. Now give me the straight up victory for AJ Styles. Um, you don't use the family as a way of getting over. I think that that would really look kind of weak to take the belt off of AJ Styles at this point in time. It could be done, but if you're going to do it, I think a bigger stage. So maybe this feud doesn't end um, at this point in time. It ends at the Survivor Series. Ooh. So I think that you give the belt to AJ Styles, and uh, you continue to have good matches, but uh, keep the belt on AJ Styles. Uh, WWE Universal Championship. Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, Hell in a Cell. Roman Reigns is champion. Braun is cashing in his money in the bank, and he's doing it straight up. Who's winning? Mick Foley is the referee in this match. Listen, I trust your instinct. You said this is potentially going to be a long run for Roman Reigns. There's no way he's a a one-month champion. Um, I don't know how they're going to play this out where you keep uh, Braun Strowman strong, but at the same time, um, give me Roman Reigns, clean victory. I think he'll take take care of business. Yeah, I think Roman Reigns wins it as well. Uh, Just to keep you updated on calling the card, I have the lead seven to four and a half. Okay, big one for me. I need it. Yes, you do. Hit me with this week's jocks. Professional wrestling news and notes. So last week, Joey Mercury was supposed to be at All In. However, he was arrested prior to the show. He was sleeping in his car. Oops. Turns out he had a warrant out for his arrest in Florida, so he never quite made it. Uh, Chris Jericho, we talked about him garnering some heat. He has a little bit of heat in WWE right now, and this is off the heels of him showing up at All In. All of this cross-promotion has really amped up the Y2J to Impact rumors. So the more and more this goes on, I think there's starting to be a little bit more and more credibility to him going to Impact at some point. Now, Chris Jericho has gone on record of saying that he does not want to do anything in the States that would impact Vince McMahon. Now, All In was a little bit different. Uh, he didn't really wrestle. He just basically promoted his cruise. That's yep. what the whole gimmick yeah. was. <laughs> All that being said, Chris Jericho has come out and he said he's changed his mind a little bit because of everything that's going on with the wrestling scene. He's really invested. It's a great wrestling scene right now, especially with indie wrestling. So he wanted to be a part of it. And there's a difference between Heat and what Scott Steiner's doing where he just eviscerates WWE anytime he talks about him. So I think that they may not like it, but they're still going to utilize Chris Jericho. I mean, he's got a great history. He's got a great relationship. Triple H knows business, and they can tolerate a little bit of heat because they know, look, these guys in the indie scene, they got to make their money, and they know that Chris Jericho is doing this to promote himself and that he's not a full-time wrestler anymore, so they'll just take advantage of him when they can because here's the thing. In anything, it's always about dollars and cents, and when it makes sense, there'll be dollars and there'll be Chris Jericho. So like around WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Hall of Fames, where they kind of need to sell a couple list tablets or anything that they want to kind of put in their uh, coffins there, they'll take care of business with Chris Jericho. Fine, heat's okay. It's no big deal. Big news on Monday. Renee Young is now a full-time announcer Say what? on Raw. Nice. So she had her. She like, has earned it because she's done a good she job. Has. She good had voice. Week trial. Yep. She's now bumped Coachman. Coachman will be doing all of the uh, all of the, the side stuff. The announcing. Yep. Exactly. So, which I think works out best for Coachman. Coachman was in a little bit over his head, and he's doing side projects too, so it gives him that opportunity. And I think it works out perfectly. Right. On top of that, you get new girls in the back. I think they found one who's not a robot. Like Dasha. So it, right. it, it's good. It's exactly. Good. Um, and finally, The Rock's daughter is now training with WWE. So you can expect to see her maybe in a couple years. Nice. 
And you think that uh, any pressure on her to succeed? Holy cow, when you're following The Rock, you're going to be expected to have promos. You're going to expect it to be over. And then when, when you're the daughter of a premier wrestler, you're going to have to prove yourself because everybody, when you talk about heat, they're going to want to knock off the daughter of The Rock. But I can't wait to see that. That'd be awesome. Some potential feuds with Alexa Bliss, with Natalia, with uh, Ronda Rousey. That'll be awesome if she, if she does her job because the second generation is coming up. The one wrestler, though, I don't think I'm hearing rumors that she's training a whole heck of a lot was Mick Foley's daughter yeah. because she had that Stacy kind of esque kind of personality and she was hot and it just seemed like once she got denied from the um, NXT you know tryout it seemed like her passion might have went away because that's a brutal business and she's so pretty that you just can be a model actress you don't need to put yourself through that kind of like Eva Marie right you know I don't I don't think that I don't think Mick Foley's daughter is going to be in the scene but. Not as heralded, Mick Foley's son is in the background writing and producing and doing some behind-the-scenes oh, see, stuff. I did not know that. Yeah, because they had a reality show, and he uh, his first uh, day on the job with WWE was he told his dad, hey, I got a job, and I'm a writer and, and things like that. So um, behind the scenes, he's, he's kind of moving his way up, being an uh, uh, influential member in some of these segments. Good. Hopefully he can get some of this writing corrected because some of the stuff they put out every single week is garbage. <laughs> So Every single Friday, fresh content in the world of pro wrestling. If there's ever an event or a video or anything you want us to see, definitely follow Adam at Adam R S T R O Z. Follow the network and comment during all pay per views we're watching at Detroit Podcast. And we want to thank those who support our project and our podcast. Definitely check out and listen every single Wednesday, nine fifteen ish on the Podcast Detroit platform. Check out the Breaking Down the Ring podcast. You can find them anywhere on social media by just going and searching. Breaking Down the Ring at BDRCast on Twitter. And definitely check out the Wrestling Perspective podcast with Dennis Farrell, P.D. Williams, James Ellsworth. They do a great job. Highly rated podcast. Great guests. Dennis Farrell's great. He's in the background now at Impact. He's uh, always around with P.D. Williams, having great interviews, having great bits. It's a great wrestling show. I've listened to a lot of the shows, and it's good content. Wrestling Perspective Podcast.com. For all Dennis's stuff, check out at Dennis seventy seven Farrell. Great stuff. It's your podcast favorite podcast, is what that is. Exactly. For the Jock Adam Swarzynski, I am the Doc John Macaroon. See everybody next week where we recap Raw, SmackDown, and Hell in a Cell. Better be good.